Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is my second look at these model kits. The Galileo Shuttle from the original series and the Galileo Shuttle Interior Parts Pack. Now these are both releases for this fall 2022 and this kit, the Galileo Shuttle, now with interior, is the full shuttle and interior. It has everything that was in the interior parts pack and the first release of the shuttle. So if you don't have the model kit at all, this is the one you want to get. Now the interior parts pack, that's what you want to pick up if you already have an older release of the shuttle that didn't come with the interior. If you have the older release, you can get this, this kit and you'll have everything to build the shuttle and the interior. One thing I really wanted to look at and kind of explore is these consoles that have been done in clear plastic. And take a look at what it might take to use that clear plastic to make these into consoles that light up. So what I've gone ahead and done is light blocked this. Uh, the first coat was black. I did a couple coats of black and then some silver. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and just take a file and just file over those raised buttons to hopefully take off enough of the paint so that we can light it up from behind. All right, so there you go. We look like we have a very nice shape uh, to the buttons there. Very easy to make those look good. And we're going to give it a go on this piece as well. All right, we'll go to the dental pick for a minute to see if we can open up a little bit of these gauges. So you can see it's not too hard to open up some of those specific buttons uh, to get the consoles to actually light up. For these consoles on the walls of the shuttlecraft, you'll really have to cut the plastic away and open it up from behind. But once again, just by light blocking it and then filing off uh, the paint off the buttons, you can see you will be able to get individual buttons to light up on those consoles. And from there, you can either use colored paint uh, to make them different colors, or you can use the decals, but a pretty cool effect and a couple different things you can do with the model. All right, and I have been asked, what would it look like if we used the shuttlecraft figures on the bridge set? So let's take a look at that now. So yes, they definitely seem bigger, especially the captain in the captain's chair. How much that would matter, um, that's up to you. I don't really think you could mix and match uh, between the two sets. I think the size difference is just enough that it would look out of scale if you tried to mix and match the figures. What I'd like to do next in the video is look at how the interior actually fits into our shuttlecraft. So this is the interior as I mocked it up in my unboxing video. You can see I have gone ahead and put in the additional chairs, uh, but we have the walls painted. We've got the consoles put in. You can see our nice old front control panel put in the ship and that back room with that opening and closing door. The one additional piece is a roof piece for the interior. Now, I'm not gonna glue mine in place. I'm not sure if I wanna keep it as a permanent fixture 
for the interior. So I'm going to take a moment. I'm just going to tape it in place. And you can see that clear plastic part on the ceiling does give you a decent look inside the shuttlecraft. That is pretty nice. Once you have your interior built, it's time to put it in the shuttlecraft itself. Now, just so we can kind of see what's going to look kind of close to a finished shuttlecraft by the time I've done, I've gone ahead and done a little bit more than I need to here. Uh, I have sprayed it with a base coat and I've gone ahead and I've decaled it. But what you build before you put in the interior is you build this bottom part, our front wall, and our port and our starboard sides. The only thing I've done additional is adding in the nacelles uh, to my build. But you're supposed to have this main structure in place. And I believe the reason why is so that you can really glue this seam well and you won't be able to do that after you have the interior inside. Here's what it looks like in the instructions. You can see you are supposed to assemble the side walls to the bottom. You're supposed to get the front in it. And you're supposed to have this sub-assembly ready to go as well. And then once you have that main structure in, you're going to insert the shuttlecraft interior. Now make sure you're paying attention to these two ports on the bottom of the shuttlecraft. Those ports are for these two pegs. These two pegs are going to need to fit inside of those. And if you don't get them pressed down inside of it, it's really not going to fit together. So from behind, you slide the interior in, start watching the door. You've got to get that door lined up before you start pressing down to get them in. So keep it up a little bit. Then once you think you have the door in place, then you can go ahead and press down to make sure those posts fit in that hole. Now it really has to be pressed in securely because if you look at this track right here, the actual roof of the shellcraft has to fit in this track. So if this isn't pushed down in here, that roof is not going to be able to fit in nicely. Now that the interior is secure to that bottom part, we can start building the rest of the shuttlecraft around it. This is why the sub-assemblies of the shuttlecraft, it should be built up like this uh, before you install it. And what you're gonna try and do here is slide it in underneath the interior. You can see that You've got a couple things it's got to connect to here. You have two more posts and two more holes for them to fit into. And then you also have two tabs and slots that this has to fit into as well. So we're going to try and slide this in from behind. And we have to spread these walls just a little bit so that it fits in. There is a lot to keep lined up here. So you can see this piece has to fit around kind of the square structure here on this back side wall. We can see I'm gonna need to get this interior pushed down more because it's not clearing this track. This has to be pressed down further so the roof can travel along this groove. And things look pretty good down here. So it must be the interior itself not being pressed down enough into those pegs. But definitely before you really secure things, make sure this track is clear all the way down. So it definitely takes a little bit of work to make sure everything fits in properly, but you can see I now do have clearance for my roof to get in the entire way. And that's what we're gonna do next. So from behind the ship, we're going to take our roof piece and I still don't think you can glue the back 
to the sides if you want your roof to be something that can come in and out. These sides back here are going to have to flex just a little bit uh, for this to fit in. Right about here, they have to flex just a little bit for this to get in. Now, the roof is not glued in place. Uh, this aft section is not glued in place, but it still feels solid. It feels complete. It doesn't feel like anything's going to come apart. So if you do want something where you can slide this in and slide it out so you can see inside, I think that's fine. And it looks like because I did my base coat before doing this assembly, I've got some scratches that would need to be picked, cleaned up. Uh, and once again, you'll either have to shave this down if you want these sides to be glued to the rear end or just live with it not being glued in so it can kind of flex as you pull this in and pull this out. But that's how you get everything to fit inside. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the roof off so that I have enough light in the ship so that we can actually see what it looks like from the front and from the side. Right, And when you look at this, this part right here where it gets just a little bit wider than it is at the end, that's why those rear pieces kind of flex as you put this in and out. But now that we have some light being able to get in, let's see what you can actually see in the assembled shuttlecraft. So you are able to see that front console from the door. You can see the scanner. You'll be able to see the consoles on the far wall and all the chairs. All right, from the front, you will be able to see all the way back to that rear room. See if we can still get our door to open and close. You'll be able to see most of your passengers. Yeah, I think you'll have a pretty good view of what's going on in the shuttle. So there's definitely some nice viewing angles for anything you want to try and set up. Yeah, you can see from the door, you should be able to see that console and control panel pretty well. And of course, this would not be a bad way to display the ship with the roof off so you can really see inside, see that back room. You see, there's not too much extra room. You know, there's a little bit of room here if you wanted some LEDs to kind of light this back part. Uh, not much room to hide a battery pack unless you do it really small. And then if you want to light up those little consoles we looked at, you can see there's a tiny little gap here where you could run wires. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of a gap uh, between the shellcraft wall and the interior not really enough for like a three millimeter led but you could put like a surface mounted led behind each of those little consoles that would look good now i think if i was going to light this up i would install my leds on this piece i would put one piece of LED strip right here to light our main cabin. And I would put another one back here to light this room. I think that's really all you would need to light the interior. And then you would just want to be kind of careful as you slide it in. But I don't think that would be too much of a problem. Now, I, I never really minded having the shuttlecraft without an interior. Um, I thought it was a good model kit. I'm always surprised by handling the model myself because I, growing up, you know, I always thought of this as like a box. The Shuttlecraft seemed very boxy. It didn't seem elegant or refined the way like a Runabout did or any of the next generation shuttles. And then you start holding it and building the model and you see how much detail there actually is in this model kit from all the warning signs, uh, to the nacelles, to the little step, to the landing gear, 
especially this landing gear, all the little details in this model kit. And my feelings are just reinforced by feeling this with the interior. There's so much more going on in this shuttlecraft than I ever gave it credit for having. Uh, the consoles, the chairs, just the personality in this model kit really comes through. Um, it's giving me a much better appreciation, not just for the Galileo shuttlecraft, but an appreciation for the original series. And looking back, I always think of the designs as being super simple, not as thought out as the next generation sets and controls, but there really is a lot going on here and some wonderful design work. And my appreciation is just always heightened by handling this. Now, one thing I will say is there's no way that crew member is going to stand up in that interior. You can see he will he would have to be hunched over if you were to try and stand up and walk out of the shuttlecraft. So take that as you might for what that means for the scale of the people and for the shuttle. Uh, but I quite enjoyed working on this interior. And I also like how good the shuttlecraft looks. Just painted one color and decaled. Uh, those decals make a huge difference and really brings this ship to life, even without doing the different colors between the top and the bottom and adding all the extras. It's a good looking model, really done just out of the box. So as always, I hope this gives you a good idea of what to expect with the Galileo Shuttlecraft interior, or if you just get the interior parts pack, what that will have in it and give you a good idea of how you're going to fit it into your builds, what challenges you might have, what things you can take and improve upon. But thank you guys for following the video. I was very glad to do it for you. Thank you for following the channel. And we'll be back with several more builds very soon.